So one of the main focus of RethinkDB 2.3 is to make it dramatically easier to set up a secure cluster. Um, and that includes clusters that you might want to set up on the internet, for example, using a cloud service. Um, but it also includes clusters that you might want to run on site um, if you want, uh, for example, multiple people to use the same RethinkDB server. Um, and I'm just going to show you what we have done here. So the first really big feature um, are user accounts and permissions. So RethinkDB 2.3 introduces um, a system where you can create accounts, uh, assign permissions, and you can protect um, different parts of your application, for example, or different teams or people using a RethinkDB server. Um, so, um, you know, um, you can't accidentally delete all your data or like ruin some table that shouldn't be accessed by a certain part, part of your application. Um, so let me show you what that looks like. The first thing um, that you will need uh, when setting up users is uh, the RethinkDB system database. And we have added two new tables here. So the first one is the users table. And if you look at what's in there, we can see that right now we have a single document. And we can tell from the ID that this is for the admin user. And right now it doesn't have any password. And this is actually th the default that you will get when you start a new server. Every RethinkDB uh, cluster always has an admin user. So let's go ahead and add a second user. And um, that works by simply inserting a new document into this table. Uh, and for now, we are going to leave the password empty. We will set it later. And if I run this, so now we've inserted a user. And we can look at the table again and see that it's there. So. Um, let me show you what uh, this looks like from the application's point of view. And I'm going to use Python for this. Um, let me load the driver first. And we can see what happens when we try to connect to the server. Um, this one is on port 2817. And there are two new options um, that we need for this. The first one is the user option. Um, and I'm going to put in the username there. And the second new option is a password option. Um, so the user auth authentication is based on the username password pair. Um, but the protocol we implemented is actually uh, very secure. It's um, all hashed and salted based on uh, the Scram standard. Um, so right now our password is empty. So, oops, this should work. Um, oh, connect, yes, thank you. All right, and we got our connection. So now let's take the next step and actually set a password for this user. Um, and that again works simply by writing to this table. Uh, and I will set the password to secret, of course. And now if I try to connect without a password, you can see that we are getting an error. Um, and I will have to provide the password. All right, now we have a connection again. So by default, when we create a new user, it doesn't have any permissions. It basically can't do anything. And that brings us to the next table. Um, which is the permissions table. So this is the second part that you will need to configure. Um, and right now, we have a single entry again, which is for the admin user. Um, and you can see down here in the permissions um, that there are four different types of perm permissions that you can configure. The most fundamental ones are the read and write permissions, which uh, do pretty much what you expect. So they determine whether you can read a certain piece of data or whether you can change it. Um, <coughs> there are two additional um, permissions. There's the config permission, which determines whether you can reconfigure the cluster, uh, for example, change the number of replicas, um, create indexes, things like that. And finally, there's a connect permission, which um, determines whether the user is allowed to use the rhttp command and basically connect out to other servers or not. Permissions can be specified on uh, three different levels. Uh, what we are seeing here right now is a global permission. So this applies to all tables, all databases. Um, 
You can set permissions on a per database level, which is really useful if you want to isolate, for example, multiple applications running against the same server. Um, or you can set permissions on a per table basis. And that gives you much more fine-grained control, obviously. Um, so let's actually, okay, so we, we yeah, so, so let's actually um, grant permissions to our new user to access some tables. And there are two ways of doing that. The first one would be by inserting into the permissions table. Um, but there's another way that I would like to show you, which is um, a bit more intuitive. Um, so I've already created a table here, uh, just as some sim very simple test data. Um, documents look like this. And um, if I want to allow uh, the user, Daniel, to get access to the table, um, I can just take the table command and call grant on it. And I will have to give it the user and then just specify which permissions I want to uh, allow. For example, we can allow just reads on this table. So now if you go over here again, and we are connected as Daniel right now, um, I can access this table. Um, sorry, I should also run it. All right. Um, but you can see, for example, if I try to delete all the data in the table, um, I will get a permission error. All right, so that's basically how permissions work in ReThinkDB 2.3. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a, a very simple to configure system that's still very powerful and uh, you can use it for a lot of things. Um, so a second thing we implemented in ReThinkDB 2.3, um, and uh, most of this was actually contributed by uh, Josh Horn, um, is TLS encryption for all connections. Um, and this is particularly useful if you, sorry, let me just get out of here. Okay, particularly useful if you want to set up a cluster on the internet and you don't want to deal with complicated uh, firewall configurations. Um, or you might be concerned about uh, people eavesdropping on your data as it goes over the network. Um, and I'm just going to show you quickly uh, which options we are providing for this. Um, and let me just scroll up here. And you can see that we have actually a whole series of options that you can configure for TLS encryption. Yeah. All right. Um, so you can, for example, enable TLS for the web UI. Um, you can also enable it for driver connections, which is probably one of the most useful ones. And also, and I think this is really interesting and allows for some very interesting and simple setups, uh, you can enable TLS for cluster connections, that is connections between the ReThinkDB servers. And one thing that's particularly interesting about this is that not only can you encrypt the data, but you can provide a certificate so that uh, incoming connections get verified against the certificate. And you can make sure that nobody can si just connect to your cluster, even if maybe uh, you misconfigured your firewall or you know somebody got access to your network. Um, so that's a really powerful feature and it makes uh, secure setups much simpler. All right. Um, I'd like to show you a few more things. So we have also done a lot of improvements to our query language recall. Um, and one that might be very interesting that's um, mostly an improvement under the hood is that we have dramatically improved the efficiency of distributed joins. Um, and I've actually, I have a second server here. So in the left tab, um, this is a ReThinkDB 2.2 server. So basically what we have released right now. And in the second tab, what we've used so far is the ReThinkDB 2.3 server. Um, I'm just going to show you this really quickly. Uh, and I already have the query here. Um, so we are going to do a simple equality join uh, between two tables. Um, and I also added a count here just to make the result a bit smaller. Um, but the amount of processing is essentially the same. And I can run this. And as you can see, it takes a while. 
and this is significantly faster, 4.6 seconds, so basically three times faster. So in fact, um, for this test cluster, both servers are running on the same machine and they're connecting through localhost. And we have done some experiments over an actual network, so if you have network latency, uh, you actually will often see improvements of a factor of 10. Um, so this is a pretty dramatic improvement. And actually we achieved that by fundamentally rewriting uh, how joins are performed. Um, all right. Um, just a few more things worth mentioning. Uh, we've added a new command fold, uh, which is kind of, depending on how you, how you use it, it's either a map operation with a state or a reduce operation uh, with an ordering, um, which sounds pretty abstract, but <laughs> uh, it actually allows you to do some really interesting things in a very efficient way, um, especially when, um, when it gets to uh, time series processing, where you want to stream large amounts of data um, and you want some, um, basically want to maintain a state while you're processing the data and output results depending on um, certain changes in the data. Um, all right, uh, finally, one really exciting thing is that uh, with ResyncDB 2.3, we are shipping a Windows version for the first time. Um, this has been over a year of work. Uh, we have recently released a developer preview for Windows um, and we think DB 2.3 will have the first beta version um, officially together with the release. Um, yeah, and that's it from my side. There's a bunch of more uh, improvements. Um, you can find all of them on GitHub if you like to. Uh, in general, um, I would like to invite you to join us on Slack if you're not there yet. Uh, you can just go to, um, to slack.rethinktb.com and you can sign up there. Um, as you can see, there's actually 64 users online right now, and there are always interesting people to chat with. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, we're happy to help you. Um, all right, do you have any questions right now? <laughs>